Lucky imaging involves using a high-speed camera or webcam to take video of planets. You take that video, you stack the clearest frames, and you come up with an image that looks something like this. To get that image to something that looks like this requires a bit of work. If you have seeing conditions, great, but if you're not so fortunate, you're probably using software like Registax, which was released in 2011 before the iPad, Uber, Lyft, or even Instagram were even around. Now, Registax is a great program, but some people complain that it takes too long to run and often crashes on their system. So is there an alternative for planetary processing? Let's check it out. This is the image that I'm starting with. It's pretty blurry, the colors look a little off, there's definitely some work to be done. Normally what I would do is take it into Registax and I'll go ahead and show you that software. So this is Registax and it's an older version of software but it's well known for what's called wavelet processing which essentially allows you to sharpen different wavelet layers you also get some functionality if I add an image like this Jupiter image we'll pull this in you can see this is a pretty dirty image which is why it's not the one I'm using but over here we've got like an RGB balance so that's going to balance the channels for us. There's an alignment, a few other things, and then there's this wavelet processing. And you can start to take these sliders, and it's a battle between dragging it here and sharpening things, which you'll see in a second. And this will be over sharpened. And then you can start to add in noise reduction, and you do this layer by layer and slowly iterate until you get an image that you're happy with. And as you can see as I make these changes, my spinner's going on because it's just taking so long to think. So what we want to do is mimic as much of that functionality as we can inside of PixInsight. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and work on separate channels. So I'm going to use RGB extract which is just a macro I have for channel extraction. So I'm pulling out the red, green, and blue channels. We'll go ahead and make that happen. And what we can see is we have a red, a green, and a blue varying levels of intensity. We can use our statistics to look at the distribution of intensity levels across these images. So the red are means at 8707. Uh, let's make this 14 bit. So that's going to be a mean of 2176. 2086 and 244. So you can see very different, well not extremely different, but these are different levels. And so to normalize that, I'll probably take the strongest channel, which is the blue channel, and I'm going to go ahead and balance the color channels. You're not going to see it yet, but it'll be there when we recombine the image. So I'm going to use what's called linear fit. I said I was going to use blue for my reference image. So let's drag this onto the red channel. 
and then let's drag this onto the green channel. And this is so subtle, I can't even see the difference here, let alone on video. Now that we've done that, I'm going to start with a step that may surprise several people. I know I was surprised when I learned about this. That's the fact that deconvolution isn't just for stars. This can help remove blur from planetary objects as well. So the way I'm going to show this is I'll take this and I'll expand the red quite a bit so we have a good view of it. Now I'm going to take parametric PSF and you really need to experiment. Don't take my settings for granted. Try different standard deviations, different shapes, and see what happens, even different iterations. But I found that if I take the standard deviation to 10, and I do about 75 iterations for this data set, changing nothing else, I'm just going to drag this here, and it'll run pretty quickly for me. Boom. Look at that amount of sharpening that it just provided. I'm going to undo redo. Let's get really zoomed in. Look at this ring. Undo, redo. So already we're seeing a benefit. Let me get this back to normal size. Going to run the same thing on the green channel. And that's done. And then finally the blue channel. And one thing that I can clearly see, but may not be as visible, is the blue channel has some problems. This data is not great compared to the green and the red. A lot cleaner data. So one of the things I'm going to do on this uh, blue data is I'm going to run a gray sea storation which is basically a smoothing function. I'm going to take the sharpness down. I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit so it's less grainy and overpowering. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And you can see it just smoothed it out. So now I'm going to recombine and I'll show you one other trick when we recombine. I'm going to use LRGB combination for this. Now normally what I would do, because I just have red, green, and blue, is take red, green, and blue, and combine them like that. And this is what we get here. So pretty, it's a little bit sharper, but it's still got some blurriness to it. The trick I want to show is I'm going to use my sharpest channel and make it double as a luminance channel. Now you can't do this all the time and it depends on your data and what's available but in this case it should work to use this nice sharp red channel as luminance as well and it'll blend the other colors. So we're gonna just take this and use the red and then I'm also going to just up the saturation slightly and this is counterintuitive but lowering this number increases the saturation balance. We'll run that. You can see we have a much cleaner image to begin with. Still not there but we've already gone from our original image here to this image. So we're making some progress. Now here's the key of how PixInsight can work in a similar fashion to Registax. At this stage I'd probably do my wavelet transformations which is not exactly an option in PixInsight. Or is it? I'm gonna open up multi-scale linear transformation. I'm going to start with a fresh dialog. I'm just going to set my layers to 8. And then I'm going to click the preview button. So right now we're looking at the preview. Nothing's changed. 
I'm going to start with my highest numbered layer, layer 8, and I'm going to put a very small bias change. Bias can go from 0 to 15. If I do a 1, it's going to completely blow out the image. So then I go to 0 0.1, and that is actually showing up nicely. But I'm going to even back off from that because this middle section is starting to get washed out already. So if I do a 0, 1, we can see something potentially change. Let's go ahead and flip back and forth. So before, after. It's pretty subtle, but it's tightened up just a little bit. I might actually change this to 0 0.02. And then I'm going to jump up to layer 7. Now, this is again something to experiment with different levels, but in my experience, I kind of double from the previous layer and then back off from there. So this is 0 0.02, so I'm going to just start at 0 0.05. I know it's a little more than double. And see if there's a change. And what I'm looking for is how much can I tighten up the image without oversaturating it, without the detail completely being blown away. So we're going to stay at 4 there. Let's try 0.1 for this one. And then we can, again, keep flipping back and forth. So 0.1 looks good, and I think if we went to 0.2, it would be too washed out. Actually, 0.2 looks okay. Let's try 0.3. I think it's over, over aggressive. So let's just hang out at 0.2 and stay there for a second. Come up to this level. I'm going to go, I was 0.2, so let's try 0.5. Now we're starting to see detail, but some, some graininess. So I'm going to back off for the graininess. Now this is where in Registax you would start applying noise reduction. And although we do have some noise reduction options, they're just not as effective. So I like to get the image as close to where I want it to be as possible and then apply the noise reduction there. So we can see this layer is heavily influencing this blue kind of halo. So I'm going to back off this layer a little bit, maybe just nudge it with like a 0.1 even that's appearing strong. Let's do that. But when I come up here, I'll go back to a point 0.1 for this level. And it looks like, let's try point 0.5. And then that's getting really grainy. So I'm going to back off a little bit. Uh, we'll stay there for a second and let's try one still too strong maybe 0.7 and we're almost to the top of our stack here <clears throat> say zero and it's okay you don't have to set all the levels. I'm going to go ahead and call it there because we've gone from this to this. So we've tightened it up and there's some artifacts to deal with, but you can see it's a huge, huge difference. We can also at this stage come down to this bottom, see if we have any impact adjusting the residuals, which we don't. If we took this stack and brought it, let's say to 0.3, you can see we're oversaturated again. So I'm just going to walk back through though and play with these levels a little bit to see how sharp of an image I can get without completely washing it out.
Okay, I'm as close as I'm going to get, so I'll go ahead and apply that. And now I'll take this, and there's a few things I can do with it. First, I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out again with uh, gray storation. I usually do about 0.55 on that. So let's do that. And then let's work with our curves a little bit. I'm going to take the edges down, do that S curve shape to brighten the body. We'll bump up the saturation slightly. And go ahead and apply that. So the two things really remaining, well actually three, I want to rotate it to a better angle. So I'm going to use dynamic crop. I'm going to take the rotation and rotate it so it's lined up. And then I'm going to crop it that way. And then I'm going to use fast rotation to do a counterclockwise rotation. And there we've got a nice front edge profile. Now I need to deal with noise and I've got this extra blue that I don't like and there's a few ways to deal with it. I think what I'll do is come into script, color mask, I'll start with cyan which is 120, I'll end with blue which is 300 so let's just do 100 to 320. We'll click OK. So now we get this mask that kind of captures the, the bluer parts of this. I'm going to soften the mask a little bit. So I'm going to do a multi-level transform and I'm just going to shave off the bottom two wavelets. That'll just smooth it out slightly. And then I'm going to set that as my mask. And what I usually do is just drop the saturation so that it's not so much of a contrast of, of blue. So I'm going to take saturation down, double check that I'm actually making a difference. And let's see, it looks like I'm having some issue with my mask. There we go. Let's invert that. And apply. Of course, it's complaining because of dynamic crop. Didn't do much as I had hoped, but I'm going to not do too much more here. And last thing I'll usually do is run a nice uh, noise exterminator. Now this is a paid plugin for PixInsight that I highly recommend. If you're not able to use this, you can use a multi-layer linear transform against with noise reduction against luminance and chrominance will do something similar but noise exterminator really does a great job so we'll run that and it's kinda of spinning up the graphics engine right now and oh it's already ran its cycle. So I'm going to call that. This is not the best image I've ever created, but the point of this was to show tools that were available besides Registax. And I just want to go back to the original here. Let's actually give it a nice um, rotation. So I don't know if you know this, but if you go into the History Explorer, I can pull up the history of image 06 
and see some of the actions I've taken. So I cropped it and I did a fast rotation. So I just applied that so we can get a true side by side. This was all done with deconvolution and manipulation, manipulation of wavelet layers in PixInsight. Hope you found this useful. If you like this, please subscribe. You'll be notified as I come out with new videos, all of them instructional, and as I discover things on my own. Be sure to uh, share the channel with others who may benefit, and I appreciate your time and your attention. Thank you.